All right, welcome back to new touch designer tutorial. And in this one, we are looking at a feedback patch once again, and also adding some audio reactivity, sort of additionally or optionally. So the main idea here is, uh, you know, just a sort of regular feedback loop. But what makes this special is this lens to sort top, which we haven't used much before, especially not in the kind of feedback context. So uh, that kind of creates this this uh, feeling of moving through the, the abstract world that we've created here. And uh, also kind of reminds me of 2001 Space Odyssey, which wasn't intended, but really you can, if you tweak this, you can kind of get close to uh, that visual. And then we can also kind of invert this, which I think is very cool. So you can kind of create this elliptical, spherical shape. Uh, we can play around with the sharpen, so we can create like more graphical, chunky kind of look or really, really trippy. Um, we can mess around with a lot of things here and we can also change what kind of input we want to have. So, for example, I can add this more like frequency based spectrum input. Maybe go up with like the, the brightness here. You can really see uh, now how our patch is, is more like based on, on the frequency. So yeah, we're going to play around with uh, some different things here. And without further ado, let's just get started. So as always, I am going to kind of delete everything. I'm just going to leave this in here. You can find that on Patreon. It's like just a sort of a playback component with a built-in speed detection. Nothing too fancy. And we are going to start with a noise top. And I'm going to change its resolution to 1920 by 1080. Change the pixel format to 32 bit float RGBA. And I'm going to make this uh, colored. On my transform, I'm just going to go up to two here. So we have a bit of a stretched noise. And uh, I'm going to go down with all my harmonics. I don't need harmonics. Go down with my amp uh, offset to 0.3 and my exponent to 0.7. For now, temporarily, I'm going to animate this with abs time .seconds times 0.2, but we're going to exchange that later for the kick or any kind of audio input. I'm going to add another noise just to uh, input times noise here. And on my transform, I'm also going to animate this with the same expression, abs time .seconds times 0.2. I guess you're all familiar with that. I'm going to do uh, period two. I'm going to use this output here and put that into the second input and I'm going to go down with my exponent to 0.75 amplitude 1.2 and offset 0.6 and I'm going to add a rectangle to this on my rectangle I'm going to change it to fraction and then just go to like 0.8 here and 0.125 here and I'm going to add a bit of softness like 0.07 it should look something like this and then what I can do is operation multiply and then you can see we only have uh like this this little part here because we don't want to have our noise all over the screen we just want to have that center part where we can start our feedback from and i'm also just gonna go up my, with my background alpha to one here so i have a black background that's actually important i'm just gonna add a null and we're gonna start the feedback loop from here and obviously we're gonna start with a feedback top and i'm gonna add a keyboard in chop as usual to uh, be able to nicely reset this with one on my keyboard. And now I'm just gonna add a bunch of different things. And yeah, it takes a while to make this actually look good. And all of this is based on a lot of experimentation. So uh, yeah, just bear with me. Operation pin light. I'm gonna put this into the second input, put that back on here. I'm gonna add a null and just call that BG. It's always display that in the background. And then I'm gonna add a level and a transform as well as our beloved lens distort that that is kind of a new thing here in the feedback then i'm gonna go to image filters sharpen to this day i don't know why they have sharpen as a separate component in the palette and not just as you know blur or whatever all the other <laughs> filters just as a normal operator but anyways I'm just gonna add a blur after this and uh then put that back in here so I'm just going to go ahead and change a few things here. So first off, we want to make this grow a bit. So I'm going to change some scaling here, like 0.2. 
1.02 and 1.005 so you can it's barely visible but it already looks kind of interesting on my level i'm just going to go up my brightness to like two and on my blur i'm going to go down with the filter size to two and then here 0.1 and 0.5 for the sample steps then on my lens distort i'm going to go down with the k1 to you can kind of play around with this i'm going to go down to point four I'm also going to go up with my Sharpen. And it's also important to actually change the order here. So now you can see something is happening. It doesn't necessarily look uh, great yet, but uh, we're on our way. So one thing is uh, we want to add a few things after the feedback loop. One of them is a limit, and then one of them, uh, another one is a level, and then another one is an HSV adjust. I might want to quickly turn this off. So limit, level, HSV adjust. On my limit, I'm going to uh, do uh, quantizing here, just round this. And uh, on my level, I'm going to actually get rid of green. I don't want the green channel. On my HSV adjust, I'm going to go down to like 0.2, my saturation. So that's kind of what it looks like right now. We still have a problem that at some point, it just more or less turns white or yeah just becomes brighter and brighter. So to counter that, we can put our original input here back into the loop again. And we can do that with a composite. Let's change the order and change the operation to color. And with that kind of trick, we uh, sort of break up the solid color with our input here and thereby create this really, really cool look. I also want to change my focal lengths of the lens distorts. So so the higher up you go here uh, with the Y focal length, the the kind of slower it's going to be on the, or it's going to look more like this is going up higher. So if you go down with it, you can see it really like at some point it even sort of, I don't know how you can, how to describe that, but you, you can see what happens. I'm just going to go to like two with this. So it's not too fast, but again, as always, you're free to change that. And I'm going to do 0.7 on, on the X focal length. Another problem that we have here that you can see that you might like, but I don't, is the sort of this cross of lines because with the this, with the transform and sharpen, like it's it's their fault <laughs> that, that this is happening. Um, so a little hack to change that, and again, I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and turn off the display. Is we can we have this cross, so we can just sort of recreate that cross with a rectangle. And on my rectangle, I'm just gonna change this to set resolution only. I'm gonna go down from my size to 0 0.04 here and one here. And I'm gonna change this to pixels and then softness 10. I'm just gonna copy it, put that in here. And here I actually wanna have composite composition. And I'm gonna change this size to one and then 0 0.04 here. And uh, now I've basically recreated that kind of cross that we had. Now what I can do is add a Luma blur. And for this, I'm gonna turn on the display again and put this into the second input and just go down with the white filter width to like two. So very slight blurring only on, on this cross pretty much. So if I bypass this, you can see we get those weird lines. And then if I unbypass it, you know, just activate it basically we can see those lines are gone. One thing we can really play around with is the brightness on our level here in the beginning. So we might wanna go down to like 1.7 and then you can see the the black parts are becoming a bit more, becomes a bit more like separated. The further down we go, the, the less solid color we have. So just play around with that. If you really go up high, you can see it. Yeah, there's more more color happening. Uh, another thing you can really play around with is the sharpen amount. At some point, it's just going to look too much. But yeah, if you go down too much, it also it also looks cool. I don't know. So <laughs> feel free to, to mess around with that. Before we continue there, I want to add some post-processing here. So I'm going to add a lookup as well as a ramp to the second input. So we can kind of override or slightly change these colors. Maybe I'm just going to go up the saturation at 0.25. And now on my uh, ramp here, I'm just going to add like a blue color. A bit of uh, like a bit a dark one and then like full saturation. Then I'm going to add somewhere here. I'm going to add like more of a 
brownish color, like brownish red. And then here I'm going to add a sort of light blue color uh, where I just go down with this and then up with this all the way. Maybe, uh, yeah, something like this should be fine. Just so we're like adding back some, some cool colors. And uh, then what we can also do is again, go to the palette and then add a bloom here. And on my bloom, I'm going to change my glow color to an orange. I don't want any ramp glow color. I'm going to go down with my glow level 2.3, bloom level 0.05. I also definitely want to have a transform here with uh, this turned on to black. So you can see, you know, we're not working with alpha in this case. Don't want to. I'm going to change my intensity to 0.7 and my threshold to 0.2. And you can kind of see it creates a bit more dynamic or just looks better that way. Um, yeah, just mess around with this. This is all just free experimentation as, as usual. As this is sort of a new thing that we haven't much played around with the lens distort. Let's have a look at that. Uh, so the higher up, like the, the more down you go with this K, the more it's going to turn into this kind of sphere. Um, so I think minus one is really kind of the, the minimum or maximum, whatever you want to, however you want to see it. And if you go the other way, then you can create that sort of elliptical, spherical shape, which I think is really cool. And then there's also, if we go back, there's also the possibility of like messing around with these P's. So P1, P2. And uh, I really recommend just going down slightly or up slightly with these but it kind of looks like it's sort of going down or going up, which I think also creates a really, really cool movement here. And then, yeah, we have the second one, which is going more like left and right. It also, this certainly looks interesting to say the least. And you can do, you can achieve similar effects by just kind of changing the optical focus, the optical center, I mean. So it kind of looks like things are like going up or down. So you can really play around with kind of moving through this abstract world. Uh, you could even think about adding like a sort of joystick or just a mouse or whatever with some, some math rearranges to, to change where you're kind of going with the camera to create that illusion. Right, so let's make this audio reactive. Um, I've, I have got this con component here that you can get on Patreon, but in the end it's really just like a you can use the audio analysis as well from from the palette. So like tools and then audio analysis are uh, built your own. So really, uh, I just got like a little uh, song playing here. And I'm just going to add like a select here. And what I want to use in this case is just very straightforward. The kick and a yeah, we don't even need to add a lag. We can technically just increase the smooth, but that's just the same thing as adding a lag. I'm just going to add a uh, math to this because uh, I want to add some. Yeah, I'm going to do that in a second so you can see better what I mean. I'm going to add a speed now. And for the first noise, I'm just going to use this channel on TZ. So let's smooth this out a bit more. And uh, I also want to have some constant movement. That's why I added this math. So I can add pre-add 0.2. So we just like uh, sending in 0.2 always into the speed, meaning um, that it's always moving. Just when the kick hits, it's like moving more. All right, so that's that's one thing, um, one idea of making this audio reactive. By the way, we can bypass the second noise, and that also looks quite cool. I think it's like a like bigger chunks, makes this even more sort of graphical. Um, and another thing that we can do is we also have the spectrum here, and we can use a chop to top, top, <laughs> and uh, then we can add a fit to this. 
You can also use a resolution, whatever. On my fit, I'm just gonna change it to the same resolution that I know my noise is, 1920 by 1080. And I'm just gonna do like first, like rotate scale translate. I'm gonna rotate this by 90 degrees and then scale it up by a thousand. And uh, maybe scale it down here, maybe like 0.4. And I'm going to add a blur to it and a level actually before that. And on my level, I'm going to go up to brightness to like four, gamma two, contrast 1.5. And then on my blur, I'm going to blur this quite a bit, like three and maybe 12. And then I'm going to put that into this null here. We might also want to change this to 32-bit float. And for this case, we might want to go up with our brightness. Maybe even more, 2.4. Um, and maybe also the sharpen. One thing you could also do here is add a noise. And then let's put that in here. Not like this but instead uh, multiply it. Let's change it to random. Maybe go up with the offset. And then for this, we could go down with the sharpen. Go up with the level quite extremely. Uh, yeah, so at this point, as you can see, we're really in the, in the play mode. <laughs> you can try out all kinds of different things. Uh, really try out all kinds of inputs. You might even consider using like a silhouette, using a Kinect or like a camera, whatever. Um, it can really be anything. And uh, you might just have to adjust the feedback loop to the, to the input. Um, but yeah, I think it, it looks really, really nice. And I'm curious to see what y'all come up with. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you to everybody who's supporting me on Patreon. I, I really, really wish I could give you more and more content. I've just been struggling with like physical, mental health uh, again. One, you know, I want to give you the more and all the quality content that you deserve, but it's, uh, it ain't easy sometimes. But hey, uh, anyways, thank you for your support and thank you for watching. And I will see you on the next video.